In today's video, we're gonna make an infograph or a pole graph in LumaFusion and in Final Cut Pro 10. So this is the first ever proper Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial that I made. And I'm starting with animation from scratch. Interesting. Well, before we head over to uh, the LumaFusion uh, tutorial first, there's gonna be timestamps down in the description below if you want to skip straight to the Premiere Pro. Ha, straight to the Final Cut Pro one, then you can just click on that down in the description below or in the comment section. And uh, if this is the first time that you are here checking out any of my videos, and especially this brand new Final Cut Pro tutorial, then I really appreciate that you stopped by. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Now I'm gonna keep this video short. So with that said, uh, let's head over to the iPad and start with the LumaFusion tutorial. So the first thing we're going to start with is to create a new text layer. I'm going to keep this at 10 seconds because it's better to have more room to work with and then later we can trim it down if we don't fill up those 10 seconds. Then we're going to go into edit on this text layer, delete the text and we're going to add a new shape. You can extend this shape to fill the entire screen because this is going to be our background. Now, if you don't want to have any background for your pulse and you want your pulse to be transparent, then skip this part. Now, after putting our desired color to the background, we can move over and create another shape. And this is going to be the framing of our pole graph. And we're going to start by making a new shape and we're gonna choose either of the two lines which you can find on the top right corner here. So I'm gonna go with the thickest one and I'm just gonna place it somewhat on the bottom section of the screen here, uh, change the settings a little bit and uh, then we're gonna duplicate this layer one time. Once we have the duplicated layer, we're gonna go down to rotation and we're gonna change the rotation to 90 degrees. And this allows us to create that left side of the L shape and once we have this at 90 we can just trim it down and change the settings and you can customize it how you want place it wherever you want and you can also change the colors of it if you want to do that now but you can always go back and do this later on and once we have this l shape done we're going to move out to the timeline again because now we're going to create the pulse we're going to create the pulse which is going to be animated up from the bottom so the way that i customized this shape is to just take the handles on the left or right side and just trim it down you can also do this with the settings parameters on the right hand side but I find using my fingers for this is is uh, by far the easiest method now once we have the first one in a position you don't really have to be that accurate with the placement on the uh, bottom section of the line here so if the poles are going below the bottom line here that doesn't really matter because we're gonna fix this in a very simple way later on in the video closer to the end when we have all the animation done. So now we have the first poll complete here and we're just going to duplicate this because this is the shape that we want. Now once we duplicate this we can literally place it wherever we want so there is no set way uh, of how you should uh, place these so you can you know you can decide for yourself how you want to place them. So now we've finished all the uh, poles here and uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can see that you have some of the poles going beneath the line here. And this is something that we don't really want because we want, we don't want to see the bottom of those poles once they are being animated up. So we're going to create a new text layer. We're going to go into this text layer and we're going to delete the text and we're going to add a new shape. We're going to use this shape as another way of masking. So we're simply going to use this shape to hide the bottom of the pulse instead of using cropping. This is an easier way and a faster way because the only thing which is going to move in this poll is in this poll. The, the only thing that's going to move in this uh, poll graph is the pulse. Yes. So anyway, um, as we put this shape on the bottom of the line here, we can also change the color to red so it's easier to see. And we're just going to place the shape here right underneath the line. And once we have this properly placed, uh, we can change the color of this to the same color as our background. So by changing this to the same 
color as we have on the background uh, you know don't have the lines anymore you can see them here once we get into frame and fit you can see the animated lines uh, or not the animated, but you can you can see the pulse here, but you cannot see the bottom section of them because we are hiding this with another layer. So this is by far the the easiest and fastest way to um, hide something instead of relying on masking, which we don't have in Luma Fusion. So we can use shapes to to really hide things um, and use that as a as a masking option if you, if you like. Now the next step is to animate these pulse, right? So you can choose whether you want to put one keyframe at the beginning and one keyframe at the end and then just have one static movement going from one to the other. But I'm gonna just make some easy ease keyframes here to the beginning and just ease those out once the animation is done. And if we take a look at that we have something that looks like this. Now there's still something which isn't right. Uh, all of the poles are coming up simultaneously and we want to add some differences in the poles. Even though we created everything in one layer, we want to separate that so we can adjust the animation of the different poles. So we don't want everyone to come up at the same time. So the first thing we're gonna do is to take the mask layer, which is now on track number three, move that up, and then we're gonna duplicate this layer of poles. So once we have this duplicated, we're just gonna offset it tiny bit then we're gonna go into edit and we're actually gonna go over to titles and we're gonna select the shapes that we don't want to have visible for that layer and for the duplicated one we will have to go into that text layer and then hide the two shapes which is the first two poles on the left side so now that we've done some adjustments to the pulse here and we also changed the placement a little bit on the uh, timeline here, we have the two pulse coming up first, then we have the middle one and then the two last pulse are coming up later on. Now you can also adjust these as much as you like if you want them to come in a little bit later and you can offset them exactly, exactly how you want them to look. You know, it's very, very simple. Now you want to add something else as well because now it still looks quite empty so we're gonna add some text now I'm just gonna fast forward on this part because this is just adding some random normal basic text uh, nothing fancy about that it's just normal text and changing the color of the different things So now that we change the colors of everything, we have the yellow lines with the yellow text and we have the pulse which has different colors. Now playing this back, it really looks awesome. Now if you want the ending of this pole graph, because now we have the uh, animation coming in right, so what we're going to do is to just trim out the part which we, you know, where we want it to stop. So once we have trimmed out that part, we're just going to render this with our preferred render settings and we're going to import and duplicate this back on our timeline. So on the duplicated version, we're just going to go into that and uh, put on a reverse clip. And once this is reversed, we will have the ending of our animation. So we will have the animation coming in and then it will go out. Now, there might be some additional things that you want to add as well. So let's say you want to have some numbers since we have the dollars here. Maybe you want to have some numbers coming of on top of the poles, which is showing the exact amount of spending or or income or whatever the number is related to then we can go into each individual poll layer and we can just make a new text layer inside that poll layer because that layer is animated and once we place the text on top of the poll and if we go back out to the timeline now we can see that the text is animated in the same way as the poll so really straightforward really really simple and the final result without that text on the top looks like this. Now before we move over to Final Cut Pro 10, there is a download link down in the description below if you want this uh, pole graph template in LumaFusion. All the way down at the bottom of the description below is a link which you can click on and then download this project. Now let's jump over to Final Cut Pro 10. Now moving over to Final Cut Pro 10, this is uh, the, I think this is the first ever tutorial that I've done in Final Cut uh, ever. And 
you know, it felt a little bit strange and it felt a little bit weird. I'm not sure if I did the method that I used uh, to create this animated poll graph in um, Final Cut Pro. I'm not sure if this is the easy way, the worst way ever. This is the first time that I'm making an animation in uh, um, Final Cut Pro. This is the first ever animation that I made in Final Cut Pro. So bear with me guys, This uh, I'm not sure if this is gonna be a hassle or not for you to understand, but yes. Let's let's dive into it. Moving over to the layers on the timeline here. So here we have a compounded clip and this includes everything that I put together. So if we just go backwards now, so this is the final one, but if we go backwards, we can see the different layers here that I have on the timeline. So we're gonna go into the top layer here, which is the framing. And inside here we have all the text and the shapes, which is creating the frame of the polygraph. So moving forward, let's just hide everything here and uh, let's start with the first thing that I created in this uh, uh, animation. So I created a new shape, which is this line shape, which you see here. And the way that I created this was to add a new uh, generator custom um, yes, a background. I added a background and I changed the color of this to yellow and then I used the transform tool here, the button right here, and I used that to just scale everything in. So I took the handles on the top, left and bottom and a right corner here and just, you know, just tr trimmed it in and until I had the line. The next step I did was to add some text, just some random text uh, placed wherever I wanted the text to be placed and uh, the final uh, result of that looks like this. So now that I have the framing done, moving back to the next section of the uh, layers here, um, we have uh, the uh, poles coming in here, but if you take a look at this layer right here, this is hiding all the bottom parts of the pulse, just like we did in Luma Fusion. It's exactly the same method, exactly the same way. So if I change the color of this, you can see that this is just a shape which has been placed right underneath the bottom line of the framing. That means that this shape will hide everything which is behind the shape. And that's also why I have placed it exactly where I have placed it, right underneath the line of the frame here. So moving over to all the yellow layers which you see here on your screen, uh, these are the pulse with text applied and uh, if we just hide everything we can focus on the bottom one because like we did in LumaFusion everything is just made one time and then just duplicated everything to save some time. So for the beginning of the animation here, if we just tap on Control V here to see the animation, uh, we can see that the animation is coming in from the bottom here, but now the animation and the pole is behind the shape layer which we applied uh, or that you saw earlier, which means that you're not gonna see this on your screen. So continuing with the animation, the pole is coming up, just some basic keyframing here, and it's the same thing with the text, but here I just added some zoom animation and uh, uh, that's basically what I just duplicated to all the different layers here and playing that back the animation looks like this. So there we have my first ever tutorial in Final Cut Pro 10. First ever. It was actually, yeah, well, it was a breakdown, sorry, it was not a complete tutorial, it was a breakdown uh, of how I put everything together. Now, if you want to see this type of video just in depth with animation, maybe another type of animation, because now you probably know how to create the same thing in Final Cut Pro, but if there's any other type of animation that you would like to see in, in Final Cut Pro, let me know down in the comment section below. And I'm gonna keep a separate video for my my opinion about Final Cut Pro versus Luma Fusion, and I think I need to work a little bit more on Final Cut Pro before I actually decide on my uh, opinion about these two softwares. So with that said, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and sign up for RobishKVlogs.com's newsletter if you want free presets in the future. It's gonna be sent out. New website is almost done, and I am so excited to show you guys how that's gonna look. So uh, that's gonna be the end for today. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.